Hey everybody, welcome back to the Audio Cycling YouTube channel where today we're going to be talking about the first round of the Super Classico, which is going to be Stellada Bianchi Category 2 race. If you haven't made yourself uh, aware, then go and look at the scoring system if you are new to the Super Classico. This is a Category 2 race, so you get 450 points for winning and you get points all the way down to 30 if you get the assist points and the breakaway points. So these are all really important to take into consideration and I will certainly be talking about them as we go through some of the riders. So of course, Pogaccia is 32 credits. With a new season, we've got a whole new rider pricing, but Pogaccia remains at 32 credits, which I was maybe a little bit surprised by considering that Volering has gone up to 34 credits over from the women's competition. I think that Pogaccia big favourite for this race. You saw a need to go with him because he is, you know, in terms of rider quality, he is a step above everyone else. And, you know, that's obviously reflected in the rider prices where he is eight credits more than the next closest person in this competition. So I think that Pigatra is just a, a really good one to begin with. And I think it's very easy to make a team this time around, which has a lot of high quality riders because there's a lot of good quality in say that 16 to 10 credit bracket so i think that pigatcha yeah just you're, you're probably just better off just picking him hershey uh has never really done well in this race surprisingly of course he did win the phone ardesh classic i want to say it was one of the it was one of those two one day races he's been in good form but I do think that it's more in for Pagacha, and I also probably favour some other UAE riders over Hershey. I just think at 24 credits, you might be better off picking somebody like Pidcock, who has also showed some good form recently in Algarve. And he's more of like the actual team leader. Although Hershey will benefit from the assist points, like I said, I think you get 60 assist points for for a winner. So if you say that Pagacha is going to, in theory, win... Hershey gets 60 credit, uh, 60 points automatically. Laporte, I just don't think this race particularly suits, in all honesty. But saying that, I do think a top 10 is possible. And Mohoric is also kind of like ditto. It's just, I just don't think it's really their sort of terrain, in all honesty. They're more of like rulers. And I just think this is more of like a... It's a bit more suited towards the climber types. Alaphilippe, unfortunately crashed twice i think in omloop so i don't know how he's recovering from that and obviously with the lefebvre thing going on at the moment i don't know what his what his headspace is like so i'm not sure about alaphilippe to be honest with you uh as green i know he came third in this race a couple of years ago but i again just haven't seen the signs so far this year haven't seen or, or madwas and powell it's like quite frankly the 22 credit guys i just don't really like too much i would have and i would be very tempted to pick palace if he did good at gran camino but he didn't so therefore i don't think that he's that great madwas you know they've also got like gregoire here and kung who i'd probably consider to be in better form uh i think madwas crashed in algarve and it just hasn't been his year so far Bajoli, very similarly not a great pick especially when you got healy who has been looking good algarve when he went on that breakaway with white art on stage five i think he looked really good there it wouldn't surprise me if Healy solo to victory, to be honest with you. And he showed last year just how good of a one-day racer he is, especially over more Healy terrain. And I think this race really does suit him. So Healy is a good pick. Uh, Velens as well, I think is really good, just based upon the opening weekend. Omloop, he bridged across on the Mur, Keppel Mur. Really strong performance there. And he was also there in that front group, obviously, in Kerner, Bliss or Kerner. And obviously... I think the benefit of Velens is that if Pigacci goes up the road, then Velens gets to sit in and will likely have better legs for the kind of attack up to the uh, up to the finish. And if it's not Pigacci's day, then Velens will likely kind of attack himself, and he could certainly go solo with Pigacci sat in behind. So I think that UE are in a really strong position, and picking two of them is probably quite a good play considering that one of them will likely be in the group behind disrupting things. 18 credit riders. There are some which you could be tempted by, like a Barguil or Kuznafoy, Kron, Sheffield, Turns, Zingler. Personally, I'm not a big fan of any of these. Kron hasn't raced so far this year, so it's just an absolute unknown. Barguil was okay in Oman, but not brilliant. Uh, Kuznafwa has had a decent start to the year, so I think that he's definitely got some promise. Carapaz, I just don't think this race suits particularly much. 
Neither, I don't think it. I don't think it suits Sheffield that much either. I think he will likely be in riding in support of Pidcock. I'd say that Turns is also quite a safe one for Israel. This is a race which suits him. After all, he has won La Flèche Wallonne in the past, and then Zingler. Also, I don't think this race suits massively. I think he is more of like a sprinting type, and therefore I'm not too sure about him for this race. So I'd say that Cousinoflar and Turns are your safest ones. 16 credit riders. Very interesting rider pricing here is that there's there's a lot of good value here Barde you could go with but because of course he has finished on the podium before uh, so I think that there's no real problems with Barde but for our better 16 credit riders Betiol's finished fourth in this race and he's been okay so far this year so you could go with him if you wanted to but again he's not the best one Del Toro for the assist points a complete unknown we don't really know what he's like as a one day racer would it surprise me if he did well not at all, but I'm not willing to gamble on it. When you've got some better 16 credit riders like Tom Schoins, Danny Martinez, and Maxime Van Hills, and Attila Volta. These guys are, in my opinion, some of the best value. And, you know, Schoins was incredible at the opening weekend, and he was in that move at Omloop. He pretty much, he attacked and wiped them out, couldn't close him down. So I think he's looking really strong, even if his results on paper don't reflect it. I think Van Hills is in incredible form. He was good in Fon Dlom and the Fon Ardesh Classic won that TT at the Ruta del Sol. Uh, Volta finished fourth in this, uh, fifth in this race last year, sorry. Martinez was incredible at Algarve. Obviously, we don't know what he's like over Stladi Terrain, because I don't think he's ever done this race before, but he is a decent one-day racer. We've seen that in the past, and it wouldn't surprise me if he did well here. So... I think there's lots of value to be had in this 16 credit bracket and I think I've probably got a couple of these guys in my team already. So I think that these guys are, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the 16 credit area. 14 credit riders, the two favourites that I like are Gregoire and Kuss. Obviously Gregoire 8th in this race last year, it is a longer race this year but he has been in decent form and arguably I'd say that he's Group Palmer's best option for this race but at only like 21 years old. I don't really be expecting him to win, so you know you're kind of going. F you're picking somebody who you think is going to be like fifth to tenth, more than likely. Cus, I think, has a better shot of finishing inside the top five based upon his performance at Class Cahayan and Algarve. He's obviously in good form, so I think that Cus is a really good one too. And you also got Simmons, who usually goes quite well in this race, but we haven't seen too much of so far this year. 12 credit riders again not a lot for i like my 12 credit riders so i'm just gonna i just kind of skipped over a lot of them uh 10 credit riders you of course have three well you could say more really good ones tullet obviously haven't has been in great form the last i don't know year or so but this is a race which suits his characteristics very similarly for for vada as well Van Eightvelt is the really interesting one. After all, he's recently won the UE Tour, so he's clearly in good form. But how does he go over Stardy? We just don't know. But at 10 credits, it's pretty low risk. So I'm more than willing to put a bit of a gamble on Leonard Van Eightvelt because I think that, you know, in theory, this race suits him quite a lot. Not perfectly, but still quite, quite well. So Van Eightvelt is a really good one, but like I say, there's also Van Hills here, so you don't know who's going to exactly be the leader. I haven't seen any press release from Lotto Destiny yet. I have reluct, and that isn't one. So maybe you can make a bit more of an informed decision once that comes out. The marker was good in phone drone, I think it was. Stephen Williams was, of course, one tore down under, but hasn't done too much since. So that's a little bit of a red flag for me. Eight credit riders, Berkmo's very good at the early start of uh, you know Etoile de Bessage he was decent at an old man but like I say Van Eightvelt's here Van Hills is here and I think he would you know more than likely be a domestique uh, both of the UAE boys are 8 credits George is making it really hard just to farm the assist points this year so you can't really do that Bart Lemon has been great so far this year you could easily pick him I'll, I think a lot of people will be tempted by Magnier but just be wary that Yes, he's done well so far this year, but they haven't been in 215 kilometer gravel races with really high level competition. So just be wary about, you know, jumping on that hype train too 
quickly uh, Vokolaz not a bad one actually for eight credits he's had some decent performances so far this year so no problems with that six credit riders there's not a lot to be going at to be honest with you I like Carlos Canal based upon the fact that he did decent in Gran Camino he did a decent performance at the Clasca Heian 2 so I think that he's obviously adept at doing well over gravel um, and without a big leader in Movistar I never got Ivan Garcia I never got Formolo who's finished on the podium before I just think that Canal has a decent shot of being a, a top 20 candidate in this race for sure other than him I would say possibly Sean Flynn could be a decent one I think he was all right in the Tour of Alps Tour de Alps Malatima Duvar so that's not a bad one and again DSM may be lacking a well, like a big out-and-out -out leader. I never got Barguil and Bardet, but maybe Sean Flynn might be given a little bit of freedom. It's just a bit of a possibility. I would say the other really good one that I like is quite far down, actually. It's Toulon Chant for Decathlon. He was, he's been in really good form so far this year, so by all means, I think that he's also a really good one alongside Canal. Mark Stewart was in the break loads in the UE Tour, so maybe you could bank on him being in the breakaway. Uh, Patilli's finished top 10 in this race before as well, like 8 for something, maybe a couple of years ago, I think it was. So you could go with him too. Uh, maybe Zambonini as well for Bahrain. He's been climbing very well recently. So, and without, again, Bahrain, I never got the Horic, but. I think that Zambonini is a slightly better climber out and out. So therefore, I'd say that Zambonini has got a decent shot of a top 20. And that's really what you're looking for. Four credit riders. Honestly, there's not a lot to be going at here. You're looking really at assist points from, if you think Martin is going to do well, go with Ergazog. You've got uh, Antoine Hubi, if you think that Alaphilippe's going to do quite well. But he is also pretty decent uh, in his own right. And other than that, Maybe you're banking on guys getting into the breakaway, but honestly, that's not a great strategy when you consider that the breakaway points are given at 50% way through the race, which is like 100k to go, and the next ones are at 50k to go. And I think that because the the really long sector, the uh, Madison Marie, I think it's called, um, that one comes with about 70k's to go, and because the race will likely kick off there. I don't see the breakaway from the early phase making it past 50k's to go. So you're really just putting the assist, like the breakaway points, you know, which is going to be like, I don't know, 45 or whatever it is, I think. And, you know, is that worth it? I don't know. I think it's worthwhile picking guys who you think are going to be in a move, like a decently sized move in that 50k's to go. Um, and then maybe picking the guy like a Pagacha who might be away like solo with 20k's, 10k's to go because they really rack up for points big time. Uh, this is the team which I have at the moment. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, Pagacha, Velen, Scoins, Martinez, Van Etvelt and Canal could of course change a lot of these riders around. My other temptation is to not go with Velens and to instead go with another 16 credit rider, let's say Van Hills put those points into Van Eightvelt because maybe he's a little bit unknown over the kind of course of a one-day race of a caliber of Stardy and go with somebody like Sepp Kuss and then my team looks a bit like that so like I said at the start of the video there's a lot of value in this midfield and I think you know a lot of these 16 credit riders have in my opinion the same chance of doing well as a lot of these 20 to 24 credit riders so that's why I think that it's quite easy to make a decent team this time round but let me know what you're thinking in the comment section down below. Are you thinking of going with or without Pagacha? Obviously, I think a lot of you will do. But I want to hear what kind of teams we're creating in the comment section down below. Because I think there's a lot of opportunity to create some really interesting teams this time round. Of course, there will be a Vela Games, uh, an Audi Vela Games podcast episode. We're recording that later today. So expect that out tomorrow, Friday. And then, of course, the race starts on Saturday. So with that, uh, thank you for watching and all that is left to say is to stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Salut!